Evening and all, welcome to this week, a week in which this programme decided to jump on the let's have a ban bandwagon by introducing extreme vetting for politicians who want to migrate to our sofa to determine if there's the slightest possibility they might give a straight answer to a straight question. So far, not one of them has passed this simple test. We remind you to keep our borders shut until they do. Speaking of politicians, we bring you the news you've all been waiting for, I know with some trepidation, but I can tell you, Diane Abbott is on her way to full recovery. <laughs> Hashtag pray for Diane. The nation's heart sank when it learned that she'd been struck down by a dose of Brexit flu last night. It's been doing the rounds here in Westminster, especially on the Labour benches, and is known to be particularly virulent when it strikes just before a key vote on leaving the EU. It was a lucky break for the government, which, with Diane in intensive care in the back room of a Brexit bar in Hackney, the government managed to scrape through the vote on Article 50 with a tiny majority of only 384. Hashtag pray for Diane. We're only five weeks into the new year and it's already all a bit repetitive. Today the government droned on about Brexit, padding out a Theresa May speech into a 77-page white paper. Jeremy Corbyn planned a cabinet reshuffle. Nigel Farage was on TV. Tim Farron wasn't. And the Scott Nats remained in their permanent state of confected anger. It all felt a bit like Groundhog Day because it was Groundhog Day today again. Speaking of those who have been repeating themselves ad nauseum for as long as anybody can remember, I'm joined on the sofa tonight by Michael, hashtag Choo Choo Portillo, and Harriet, hashtag It's time we had a female Doctor Who, and why not me, since I'm used to travelling in confined spaces in my little pink election bus. Harmon. Guess she's also used to dealing with Daleks, and she's worked for Gordon Brown and Ed Miliband. <laughs>